Good morning. Happy Wednesday. It's me, Robin. And hello to um, anybody that is here on the live. And if you're not on the live and you watch this later, hello to you too. Um, so today we're going to get started on the Sewing for Leaf Press. Um, some of you have already started and I've been seeing the leaf blocks pop up in the group, which just makes me so happy to see them and I'm really excited to see some of the different color combinations and fabrics that you guys are using it's really wonderful so um, I do not have a two camera setup as of yet um, we were out of town for a wedding and my daughter who flew in from New York uh, just left literally two minutes ago and I ran up the stairs so Oh, didn't have time to figure out some of that, but we did get the room rearranged so that you could see a little bit more of the sewing space. Um, I'm having a couple issues with the sewing machine um, on my seam allowance and sewing straight because yesterday, in terms of moving the machine and moving things around, I think we might have messed a little bit with the tension and I rarely have to do anything to my machine. This is a Juki TL2200 uh, QVP Mini and I love it. It's an amazing workhorse. Um, but on this uh, thing, I didn't want to mess too much with the tension settings before getting going this morning, um, just because I didn't want to, it was sewing okay, but it's pulling a little to the side. So um, excuse me for that. Anyway, um, if you have not finished with cutting on things, no panic, no worries. Um, I am also sewing, I'm, I'm making my version, which is with the dark uh, mocha background and the forced frolic fabrics. And I decided that I'm also going to do this Christmas one with the thatched background in crimson red. So for this one, I am cutting as I go. So in the pattern, every time I get to a section, that's you know here talking about what I need I am cutting the background pieces and the leaf pieces as I go so as long as I've got my strips labeled with the width I make my width the fabric strips then I can just cut off of these as I need to make the pieces that are needed in the chart if you do that please do refer back to this chart so that you see what all is supposed to come out of a row, you make sure you get your longer pieces out first than the smaller pieces. So that one I am doing uh, cut as I go. So for the Christmas version, I wanted to show you, so the first thing that we do when we're sewing is we're gonna start with the simple leaf block, right? And I usually, um, I have the instructions for the little stem for the leaf that's down there first. And on that, I tend to just sew the little stems as like fillers in between my leaf pieces um, because I like to chain piece and not have to keep like stopping and pulling thread. So I like to just keep things feeding through the machine. So I use those as like little fillers or I use a little piece of leftover binding that I didn't need as like a start and stop, um, you know, for my piece. So the first thing on the simple leaves is we're gonna join the fabric A and B together. And again, I'm gonna like refer back to my list so that I know which fabrics are my A and B. And my A and B, there we go, I get the right page up here. My A and B are this cinnamon and the little fall fling. So I'm gonna sew those together. I rarely pin, so just trying to keep it from making too big of a seam allowance. I rarely pin um, because I do a lot of sewing and so I'm usually fairly accurate um, with the pieces. There are certain things that I'm really specifically matching points and I will pin on. This particular quilt, I don't do very much pinning um, with it. So I did start with sewing one of the um, the pieces for a stem on another one here too. So um, once I do that, I'm going to be pressing the seam open. So with my piece here, I'm going to just put my start and stop through so that I can snip this off. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to press this. 
and I am pressing my seam open and then I'm going to be putting the corners on over this. Now I wanted to explain one thing about why I join this together first, then I put the corners on. If I, I can do it where I take one piece, right, one piece like this, and I put my corner piece on, stitch, flip, you know, so I would have that there. And then I could make my two halves and put them together. What I find happens when I do that, and this is a good example of it, I get things that don't match very well. I have trouble matching my points. And I also find it a little more challenging to be pressing this open later. And I want to press it open so I don't have as much bulk. So this is the specific reason why I think it's more forgiving for me to sew my pieces together first, then sew the stitch and flip over it. So now once I've got my pieces together, I'm going to get my background piece. This is a two and a half inch square. Make sure. Yep. And on the back, I'm either going to mark this corner to corner with a pencil. And my pencil just dropped. There we go. I'm going to go corner to corner like this. And then I'm also going to move over from the line that I make. I'm going to move over a half an inch. And I'm going to mark another line a half an inch over. The reason why I'm doing that is that I'm going to sew an extra seam so that when I cut this off I have an extra half square triangle that I can use either later in my project or in other projects. Um, for a small triangle it's not worth doing this. For larger triangles they're very handy and it's totally worth doing it. Now if I didn't want to mark it then what I use is and this is usually what I do. I usually don't mark. I usually use this um, Cluck Cluck Sew Diagonal Seam Tape. And this just pulls off. It's like a washi tape. And you line it up on your surface where you're sewing. And you line it up with the red going right to the center of the needle. And then it gives you black lines to follow, which is a quarter inch on each side. So I know when I put something down as long as I'm following the quarter inch I'm going to be doing you know that or if I'm if I'm doing a triangle so on here I want the extra line that I drew it's good if I have it right sides together the extra line that I drew is going to be towards the outside and I'm going to sew this so that I am going from corner to corner. I'm not worrying about, I don't want this to match the seam. I want this to overlap the seam because I'm going to have another seam allowance in there. So that's overlapping the seam. So I don't want to start feeding this under the machine on this end first because then there's a chance that this part can get caught in the feed dogs. So I always want to start on this end. I want to start on this corner and sew towards my middle seam, if that makes sense. I hope it does. So, let's see. And if I didn't have the line marked on here, I would just be having the corner of the square following the red line right down the center. I would know that that was my middle point rather than marking it. This is pulling to the side. And I'm going to do that on this as well. And it's the same thing. I want to start on the side that does not have the seam. And I just chain piece. And I do all of these like one corner at a time. Just back to back. So once I've sewn the first seam, I'm going to go back in that second mark that I made, or I can just eyeball to what is a half an inch over. I'm going to sew another seam. Do it on both sides. Okay, now when I cut this, you can use your rotary cutter to cut. I just keep these scissors 
They're serrated. Um, the Karen K. Buckley, I like the size a lot at my sewing machine. It's really good for just trimming off the corners. So now I've got an extra half square triangle that is from what I just cut off of here. And this I'm going to just put aside into my handy dandy little button boat that I showed on my test yesterday, which if you didn't see it, this is from um, Lazy Girl Designs and it's her pattern for the button boat and it will unfold flat and then you uh, use your twine or floss or cord to wrap these around together. And so I keep my little pieces, my little extra half square triangles as I'm going along, I keep them in there. So just like when you make a flying geese unit, you want to press the side open. I press it, the seam to the side, but I press this open before I add my second piece. And again, you should be going over this seam here. And now I'm going to get another piece. And I'm sewing from the side that is not the seam, not the middle seam. I'm using my diagonal seam tape and just following the point of the square with the red line. And this one I'm also going to trim and get ready. I can't believe it's already into the first week of September. Feels like it's going really fast. Oh! Okay, I broke my needle. <laughs> uh, I think we are still in Mercury retrograde, so um, that's uh, I'm gonna have to change my needle out here. So let me get my little screwdriver. And I don't have a pin in there or anything, so I'm not really sure why my needle decided to all of a sudden just give me a problem there, but it did. And so I'm going to check down here, and I see, let's see, I'm going to get my bobbin out. And this is what really happens when we're sewing, isn't it? Sometimes you have stuff that, that goes on. All right, I'm going to put my bobbin back in. I guess my machine really did not like being moved around yesterday. All right, and I'm gonna get my little screwdriver here. Needle out, okay. So I always keep a good supply of extra needles here. I use these organ needles, which were the ones that came with the machine when I bought it. I tend to use the um, Superior needles, a lot of times I use these on my long arm, the titanium coated ones. Uh, I find these handle really well. Um, since the organ needles were what the Juki came with, this is just what I keep um, getting as replacements for this. All right. And I'm going to rethread here. To loop, come back out. For some reason, I seem to um, not do too well with the actual threaders on the machines, and it's easier for me to just thread myself. And that is across the board, all the machines I seem to have problems with threaders. All right, I'm going to do a test here, make sure we're running okay. okay. And everything's fine. Okay, 
So now we have a nice new needle. Hopefully the machine will be happy with that. And I believe I was sewing here. I was right at the very end of my seam. And I think I was going off a little bit. I'm going to re-sew this seam because it looks a little crooked to me. I'm going to make my second seam here so I can cut off this half square triangle. Okay, this is not a perfect corner, however, I feel like any kind of not matching is a lot more forgiving when I add my corners on top versus doing the corners first, then trying to join it. So this is really my preferred way. I also really like how in the back, see how flat that lies once I've added the half square triangles on. It's much, much easier for me to press this and get a much better um, seam here so that when I'm sewing later, I'm gonna have a smoother result with that. All right, so I'm gonna add the other two corners and I'm gonna do the same thing where I'm just gonna, I'm starting on the, the side without the center seam. I think my machine's a little happier with a new needle. And I'm going to add one of these here. If you are marking lines on your fabric and your fabric is dark, I tend to usually just use pencils. Um, I also do like uh, this white uh, marking pen that's from Clover. It's almost like a little tiny fine white. I use this if I'm doing wool um, applique. And uh, when I'm doing embroidery, sometimes I use this air racing sew line and air erasing sew line. I find that those two work really well for me if I'm um, marking on fabric with something other than just a regular lead pencil. my corners there, press it down. And this is going to be the last corner on this leaf. I did go ahead earlier and make my, um, my little stem doing my two pieces together. On the stem it does not matter if you are pressing this open, if you're pressing it to the side, when it's a, a small piece like this, I find that a lot of times it's just easier for me to put the iron right in the middle and press to the side. But that's probably going to depend on the color of my background. If I have a white background, I'm going to press both of those in towards the center. If I want it to lay really flat, I might just press it open. It's going to be case by case basis depending on the fabric. sewing my extra seam. Save this for later. And this I'm just eyeballing a half an inch over. Here's my leaf, and here's my stem now. 
I'm going to look at my diagram and see. I want my B on the left side, my A on the right. It doesn't really matter which side you have it on. Um, but in terms of pieces not being exactly right next to another piece of that same fabric, I tended to try to move them around appropriately in the diagram. see this now. And I'm going to just put my leader through here. All right, that looks like that's pretty even. I'm going to go ahead. I could either press this down to the side or press it open. I think I'm going to press it open. Sometimes I feel the fabric really sort of gives me the clue on which way it wants to go. Um, I do use an Aliso iron and I often use clappers and I have a wool mat. Um, so on a seam like this where I've got the like flying geese corner basically that I'm doing, I'm gonna go ahead and leave a wood clapper on there. Um, this is a new wood clapper that I just got recently when I was at the Long Beach Quilt Festival. It's from Emerald Dot Company, and this is um, this is Shannon Skirtino. Emerald Dot is her company. Her dad makes these for her, and you see the little dots in there. So he gets um, wood that is coming from the athletic floors of schools. I think that are being torn down or renovated. So these were gym floors, and I love the fact that this has the character of these little dots and stuff left in it. And uh, so this is one of my newest um, clappers. So I will leave that on the seam so that it's nice and pressed open and that's one of my newest ones that I'm excited about. I like the shape of it and everything. So thank you Shannon. I was happy to get that at the Long Beach Quilt Festival. Um, all right so that completes one leaf and so we're going to make another one that looks exactly like this and then another one that's with our combination um, C and D fabric and so for me my C and D fabric is um, these right here and I started putting my corner on this morning um, and so that's in progress. The next thing that's for this week is the oak leaf and uh, just so you know I've got my pieces here that I had arranged into my little baggies and I had labeled them all you know in the baggie with the stuff and then in the morning I sit down I get out my pieces and then I go through my little egg crate of all my cut pieces looking for the ones that I know I need in the instructions. All right, so this is going to be a leaf. There we go. Uh, next is going to be the oak leaf. And on the oak leaf, the, the one thing that I will do with any of the leaves that I'm making is I am going to go ahead and lay these out on my board so that I can see if any of my fabrics are directional. And if they are directional, I want to make sure that I'm adding like the top of the leaf piece or the bottom of the leaf piece in the direction that I want it. These aren't going to really matter so much, so it's okay, but I might look at something and say, if there's triangles covering a part of it, I want more of a design to show through. So I do lay out all of my pieces in advance to decide which way I want them going or matching. And on this oak leaf, the first thing we're doing is we're joining the two long strips for the center of the body. We're also working with the, the small piece and the long ones to make the, the stem, just like the other. And uh, once you've got this piece together, then we are doing the same thing with the stitch and flip and we're doing it just to the top end of the piece. So I've got my one and a half inch square here. Now a corner like this is not very big, not that usable for me. I'm not going to make another seam, cut this off and save it. This one is gonna be cut off and just put in the trash. I'm not that crazy. So I'm just going to trim that off, 
I find just trimming them with my scissors is faster for me. Okay, so there's my, there's my end. A little bit of, I'm using a, a tan thread. I have a little bit of that just coming through. Let me pull that off, there we go. Okay, so that's that piece. Now I'm going to look at you have to make sure you're doing these in the right direction. So this is a case where I may go ahead and draw the lines on the back of the pieces. This is when it might matter to me. So here are my pieces, and here I've drawn a line on some of these. So you're going to be doing the two small ones at the top, and so I want to make sure I'm sewing these the right way. So I'm going to lay this down. And what's kind of fun about this is that um, my pieces are going to completely cover up um, the leaf as I'm doing it. And where are my bigger ones? I think they're over here. Yep. Okay. So the bigger one I'm going to go ahead and add a line to. And this one I might decide to save the corner because it's larger. All right. So you can see that I have laid it out with my pieces on there. I know this is going here, here, here. So I'm making sure that my fabric underneath is going the direction I want it to go. And I want to make sure that all my angles are going to be correct for the leaf. So I lay each of these out in advance. Come over here and I usually have a number of them ready all at the same time. I feed one of those through. This one also goes, I could flip that. I don't lose track. I'm just going to keep going on this one. best interest of time I'm going to go ahead and just cut this off and not make the extra seam a bonus seam all right so here is my piece I cut off all of my corners it almost looks like half of a heart I'm going to press these open All right, so this is the first side for my leaf. So I'm gonna finish off the second one. And again, I'm gonna double check that my angle is going the correct way. And I know because I've sewn these going the wrong way before. So I try to really keep everything laid out on a board. and be paying attention and concentrating while I am sewing them so that I make sure I'm going the right way. Because on the other side, I'm going to be doing it so it's a mirrored image. Okay. My two leaves, one goes on top of the other. The nice thing is you don't have a lot of points that you're trying to match up when you're doing this. Okay. 
Okay, something is going on with my machine. I can press this open. I would probably leave this under the clapper. I'm going to do another test to see if things are okay here with my girl Blanca. Okay. Now I have my piece for the top. And the way that the piece is, again, I'm not worrying about matching a point the way I would if I were sewing this to a flying geese unit because it is intended to be cutting off the top to making more of a rounded look for this. So now that is the finished piece from one side of my oak leaf. I'm going to do the same thing with my pieces for the other side. I'm going to add the top to it. Then I'm going to add them side to side, matching with the center fabrics. Lining up here. spool. All right, so there's half of the oak leaf. After I join the other side, then my stem is going on the bottom, and I'm going to uh, repeat to make the second oak leaf. So that's it for the, the leaves um, for this week. So next week we're going to be doing the um, large aspen leaf and the aspen leaf trio. Um, and so I hope you guys are able to get going on this. Like I said, if you don't have all your background pieces cut, just do them by the section. It's okay. Um, the other thing that I wanted to share is um, I meant to have the blog post up about the Oak Grove Square sew along. And there's just been <laughs> too many things all going on at the same time. So it'll, it'll get up this week, but I did want to show you some printouts that showed you some of the colorways that I had worked on for Oak Grove Square. Uh, I was going to start at the middle of September since it's already, what are we, September 6th, I think. Um, I think I might start at the third week in September just so there's more prep time. Um, this is... Uh, the dark drama colorway that is um, with the soft black for the background. Uh, I think it's the soft black and not shadow. Um, that one is using also um, olive, I believe, for the, um, the outer ring and the rest of these are all the soft black. Uh, this is a light autumn palette, so a happy autumn palette where it is the cream and the center has washed linen, and then it's a pink grapefruit for the other outer ring. Um, and so this is like really light fall colors. This is the same palette, however, it's just replacing the outer border with the um, smoked paprika. So the difference of this and this is only the outer border fabric. Because again, with this one, you can do different fabrics for each ring, or you can do all the same fabric. And this is, well, what if it really wasn't a fall quilt? What if I wanted this to be more year-round? And so I was doing this with kind of happy colors, where it's some more greens and uh, some turquoises added in there uh, to go with it. And so this is um, kind of a year-round um, happy springier palette. So I'm going to be sharing the palettes with all of the thatched specifications for anybody that wants it on the blog post. I believe we'll start this then the third week in September um, and I'll post more information on that. Uh, the other thing I wanted to let you know is that I did kind of a random going through the feed on the Facebook group and Pam McClung um, I saw the lovely pillow that you did. I wanted to give you some of the Forest Frolic 
um, little zipper pulls that I showed last time. And I have another person that I randomly went through and kind of like I can draw a random number and then count through the number of posts. Um, the other one is Denise Wilcox. And so Denise, um, I will go ahead and DM both of you, uh, but you get to pick out um, a PDF pattern of your choosing that um, you get for free. So um, I don't know if there's any questions and uh, that's what I have to share with you guys today. I think that's it, you guys. All right, I hope that you are busy sewing and making your leaves. I'm glad you're doing this with me, and I hope you have a super week. Thank you.